Good morning. When was the last time that you had a bad day? Notice that I didn't ask if you had had a bad day because we all have bad days from time to time. The car won't start. The computer doesn't work right. The dinner gets burned. The internet goes down. An appliance goes on the blink. We forget an appointment. The boss is especially demanding. The kids are grumpy and by the time you're through dealing with them, you're grumpy too. We all have bad days from time to time. But sometimes our bad days seem bigger than usual. They loom larger and can assume almost gigantic proportions that can intimidate us, frighten us, and overwhelm us. I'm going to talk about how we can better deal with these gigantic bad days that come our way right after the praise band from Manly Baptist Sings Confidence. you're calling me to do but lord with your strength i've got no excuse because broken people are exactly who you Sometimes our bad days loom like giants over us. David in the Bible knew what it was like to face a giant. He was just a shepherd boy when armed with only a slingshot, he defeated a giant. And from him we can learn how to better confront the gigantic bad days that come our way. I invite you to follow along as I read part of David's story from the Bible. A giant nearly ten feet tall, stepped out from the Philistine line into the open, Goliath from Gath. He had a bronze helmet on his head and was dressed in armor, a hundred and twenty-six pounds of it. He wore bronze shin guards and carried a bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over fifteen pounds. His shield bearer walked ahead and f him. David said to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin? 
but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. There's no doubt about it. Goliath was gigantic and truly frightening. He was taller than the tallest basketball player, bigger than any NFL lineman. He was so intimidating that no one in the army of Israel would face him in single combat. Then David accepted the challenge. By any standard imaginable, Goliath should have easily killed him. But David had learned some things that enabled him to defeat his giant. And from him we can learn how to defeat the giants that daily confront us in our lives. One of the first things we need to know is that giant killers see more than just what is, they also see what can be. David said, This day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down. David was confident, not in his ability, but in the Lord's power. Do you remember the Bible's definition of faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. David had faith. He believed, he was certain, he was positive that God could use him to triumph over Goliath. The men in Israel's army were frightened of Goliath because all they could see was how big he was and how small they were in comparison. But David saw more. While he knew that Goliath was big compared to him, he also saw how small Goliath was compared to his God. We often make the same mistake as those in Israel's army that day. We see our problems and we think, look how gigantic these problems are. They're much too big for me to handle. What we should be saying instead is, compared to how big my God is, this problem is small. In the Bible, God says, I am the Lord, the God of all the peoples of the world. Is anything too hard for me? When we evaluate our problems only in terms of what we can see, what we can do on our own, we're setting ourselves up for defeat. We have to train ourselves to look with the eyes of faith to see the possibilities our all-powerful God provides us. Now, you may be facing some giant this morning. Instead of Goliath, your giant may be called health concerns, financial problems, major life decisions, fear of the future, peer pressures, relationship problems, loneliness, or something else. These are all gigantic problems. But no matter how large they are, the real question is not how big is this giant I'm facing. The real question is, how big is my God? Shut your eyes for just a moment. You got them shut? Okay. I want you to think of a gigantic problem you're facing, one that feels overwhelming, one that you don't know how you're going to handle it. You got it? Good. Now say to yourself, my God is bigger and stronger than blank, and fill in the name of your giant. My God is bigger and stronger than blank. Open your eyes. The Bible says, God's Spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. By faith, giant killers are certain that God is bigger and more powerful than any gigantic problem they face. Giant killers also offer what they have to God, no matter how small it may seem. Often when we face our giants, we think, if only. If only I had more, then I could handle this problem. If we're in debt, we say, if only I had more money, then I wouldn't have this problem. If we're looking for a job, we might think, if only I had better connections, then I could find a job. 
Over and over we say, if only I had something more, something better with which to fight my giants, then I wouldn't be in the situation I'm in. But often, when we give what we have to God, he will use it to defeat our giants. God had David use the weapons he already had to fight Goliath, a simple slingshot and some stones. In the Gospels, when faced with a large, hungry crowd, the disciples said, we don't have nearly enough food to feed all of these people. It's impossible. What are we going to do? Jesus asked them, what do you have? And they said, not much, just a little bit of bread and a few pieces of fish. And Jesus said, great. That'll be enough. I'll use what you have. And Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish and fed 5,000 people with 12 baskets of food left over. God can use the little we have to do great things if we trust him and turn it over to him to defeat whatever giant that threatens us. When we are facing our giants, we should remember, as A.W. Tozier once wrote, anything God has ever done he can do now. Anything God has ever done anywhere, he can do here. And anything God has ever done for anyone, he can do for you. Giant killers give God what they have and trust that he can use it to defeat their giant. Giant killers also give credit where credit is due. David said he was challenging Goliath so that the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. David did, didn't want to defeat Goliath so that he would be proclaimed a hero. He did it so that God would receive praise and glory. David went on to write 75 of the Psalms in the Bible. Do you know how many times David mentioned his defeating Goliath in those Psalms? None, not once. I don't know about you, but if I had killed a giant, I'm pretty sure I would have written about it. But David realized that God had given him that victory, and he wanted God to receive the praise. When God answers your prayers and defeats your giants, you need to follow David's example and give God the credit and the praise. By doing this, you offer people hope for when they are facing their own giants and you remind them that they don't have to be afraid because God is more powerful than any giant they will ever face. Watch this video based on one of the Psalms that David wrote, Psalm 27.
The story is told of a time when Shug Jordan, the legendary former football coach at the Auburn University, asked his former linebacker, Mike Colon, who was then playing for the Miami Dolphins, if he would help his alma mater do some recruiting. Mike said, sure, coach. What kind of player are you looking for? Shug said, well, Mike, you know there's that fellow, you knock him down and he just stays down? Mike said, we don't want him, do we, coach? No, that's right, Shug said. Then there's that fellow, you knock him down and he gets up and you knock him down again and he stays down. Mike smiled and said, we don't want him either, do we, coach? Shug said, no. But Mike, there's a fella. You knock him down and he gets up. You knock him down and he gets up. You knock him down again and he gets up. Mike said, that's the guy we want, isn't it, coach? Shug answered, no, Mike, we don't want him either. I want you to find the guy who's knocking everybody down. That's the guy we want on our team. No matter how big and threatening the giants you may be facing today are, know that God is big enough to knock them all down. With God's help, you can defeat your giants. Thanks for watching. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you today and every day.